Good morning everybody, I'm Deborah Byrne from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services, known as DB Psychology across social media. And this morning I just want to uh, preference what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk about domestic violence. So if you've been a victim of domestic violence, um, you may uh, have flashbacks from some of the things I'm going to be talking about this morning. So you may feel that um, you don't want to watch the video and I can you know, I would perfectly understand why you wouldn't want to watch it and perhaps recommend that you don't watch it. Um, this week I'm only going to be talking about uh, the warning signs of domestic violence. Um, next week I will be talking about um, uh, how you can help yourself and how you can help uh, a friend if you think they're in a domestic violence situation. Um, I will go into more detail next week about that, but all I would say to you is uh, safety first, always safety first, no matter whether you're a victim or trying to help somebody. Um, safety first is very, very important. So I will talk more next week. Now, to get on to today's topic, um, most people, when they think or hear about domestic violence, think about uh, physical abuse and they think about the uh, drunk man uh, beating his wife. Um, now, I'm not going to write that off. That does happen. And physical abuse it can be part of domestic violence, but not necessarily. Um, domestic violence can be much more subtle. It can be emotional abuse. It can be financial abuse. It can be sexual abuse. So these are the issues that pe uh, people fail to re realise that it does span more than physical abuse. So I will give you some warning signs um, that you can look out for. Um, the other thing I would like to say this morning about domestic violence is that it's just like addiction. It doesn't care how much money you have. It doesn't care uh, how well educated you are. It doesn't care what your sexual orientation is. It doesn't care what your gender is. Uh, most people think that domestic violence only affects women, where in fact uh, domestic violence does affect men too. Now, there are two wonderful organisations uh, in this country, in Ireland. Uh, one being Women's Aid, which helps women. And there is another organisation which probably isn't as well known, and that is um, AMEN, which helps men who are victims of domestic violence. So if you are a man and you feel you would like to reach out, I would urge you to do so. And I know it's probably more difficult because we hear so much about women and domestic violence. But Amen are there to support you. They do offer counselling and they do offer um, court accompaniment and they will advise you on your rights and entitlements and what you can do and how you can help yourself. Just as much as women aid, Women's Aid will do exactly the same for women. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I would urge anybody that wants information or needs help to reach out to either organisation. Have a look at their websites. Um, in this for Ireland, I'm talking about, but in the UK, uh, Women's Aid and Refuge is also brilliant. Um, I'm not sure of the men's services in the UK and I'm not sure about them in other countries either. Um, but if you go go in and Google um, help for domestic violence in your own country, I am sure you will find organisations there that will help you. Um, so um, I'm going to just have a read down through some um, uh, warning signs. And I would also just like to highlight before I do that, sorry, there was one other point I wanted to make, was about we don't consider uh, stalking and uh, dating abuse um, as part or under the law in domestic violence. But they are very much and they should be, I feel they should be included in that um, because, uh, you know, it, it's classed as being your partner or your husband or wife um, under the law. And it doesn't take into account that you could be uh, dating somebody and being abused. It, uh, you know, stalking can take place either in person, but it can also take place online, uh, digital um you know, technology means that um, anybody now can be abused. You, you know, the cyberbullying, which I think we've all been heard about. We've all heard about the revenge porn. Uh, that's either images or video being um, placed up on, on social media or on the web. 
um, against somebody's consent. Um, but there are other ways with technology and how quickly it's moving. It is much more easier for you to be abused. So please be aware of um, your situation, not just your physical situation. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is morning. Not just your physical situation, but also be aware of um, what information you're putting out there on social media and what information or how people can um, or could access your 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 phone or your tablet or your laptop or your computer. Um, so just be aware that abuse can occur and does occur um, online as well as in person. Um, even if you are with your husband or wife uh, or your partner, they um, in a domestic violence situation, they do tend to use social media against against you, either your access to it or um, uh, to spy on you. So these would be some of the warning signs. I'm just going to start them now. So some of the warning signs um, Now, any one of these can be a warning sign of domestic violence. But if you are beginning to see a pattern, a consistent pattern with any of these um, perhaps it's time to reach out for help. Now, as I said, safety first. So I will talk about that next week. Always, 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 if you're accessing any sort of information online, make sure you know. And a, a Women's Aid will, has a great um, uh, information on how to delete your cookies and things like that. So just be very, very careful though about doing that in your browser history. Because if you do do that, um, your partner may know that you have done it. So uh, take their advice. It, it, they do walk you through it step by step on how to access the information. Or perhaps you can reach out to a friend uh, or go to the local libraries. The local libraries um, offer their use of their computers for free. So think about doing it that way, maybe going there to get your information. If you feel your safety could be compromised, if you use the home computers or laptops or your, your phone or anything like that. Um, do think about where else I could you I could get my hands on um, information online. Um, so if you are afraid of your partner, um, if you are constantly thinking about their their moodiness, walking on eggshells, if you are constantly um, worried about their needs and is their needs being met, are they happy? Then you know. Think about this. You shouldn't have to be doing that. You shouldn't really have to be worrying about them constantly. They shouldn't be, have to be your main focus um, all the time. So think about it. What is this normal? Is Or is this level gone up a bit? Um, are you are they losing their temper over silly things? Are, is it becoming a bit more um, consistent that they're losing their temper over the least little? thing and you know as I said you're walking on eggshells around them um, I do have to look over my notes because as I said oh, in my last few videos in my brain I can't keep it all in my brain and this list is quite extensive um, you know the obvious one obviously is have they hit you or threatened to hit you or threatened to hit your children have they are they controlling your money are they controlling the bank accounts um, are you allowed to work are you um um, are you allowed to keep your income? Have they drained all the bank accounts uh, that all the income is going into their account? It's under their control. Have you been forced to sign your signature to something? Have you, you know, banking documents or have you been forced to go into a bank and sign over money or give money? Um, are they, you know, are they withholding money for food? Are they threatening to withhold money? Are they, you know, not just for you, but uh, your children. Children are affected by domestic violence just as much as the person in the relationship. Um, sexually, are you being forced to have sex against your will? Are you being raped? Are you, you know, are you in a vulnerable situation where you're being forced to have sex? Uh, maybe they're forcing you to have sex with other people. Um... This is all domestic violence. It's not just about the hitting. Are they um, are they verbally abusing you? Are they verbally and criticizing you, not just in front of other people and putting you down constantly, but this can be just done very quietly, very subtly. It's constant. Um, it's drip, 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 uh, constantly criticizing you, calling you names and doing it at home in private. Maybe not in front of the children. Maybe they are. Um, 
And constantly doing this, the constant criticism is um, is awful. It can be emotionally draining, psychological. It's like psychological warfare. OK, that's what they would employ if they if you were going to war, they would employ psychological warfare. And that is what this can be um, uh, likened to. Um, are you being, you know, are they constantly criticizing your family or are you being restricted in seeing your family and friends? Do they say what you can wear, what you can't wear? And then, you know, throwing tantrums and, um, you know, over over everything that happens in your life. They're very, very controlling. So it just it doesn't have to be that that they're hitting you. And but there is a threat of violence. Um, but they are controlling every little aspect of your life. Um, and that, you know, that that can really get in on your psyche um, and um, it can be very detrimental to your mental health. Uh, a lot of women and men who leave domestic violence situations, um, you will have PTSD and you do need to reach out for help once you, you want, you know, you will need therapy once you leave. And that is a... Um, uh, it, it's a very difficult thing to do to actually leave a domestic violence situation. Um, it can build up over years and years. As I said, it gets in, they get into your head um, and you begin to question your own sanity. So it can be very hard for to leave. So if you are trying to help somebody and they don't want to leave, um, don't don't you know don't give up on them don't don't give out to them just be kind be listening and um because it is very hard it, it not many people make it out um but it it is possible please please remember this it is possible to leave a domestic violence situation i'm just going to check my notes now and see if there's anything else i wanted to um i have a lot of I've, it's a, as i said it's a very long list um you know, are yeah, are they are they jealous? Um, are they accusing you of flirting or having affairs falsely? Um, are they um, are your needs not being met? Do they consider them insignificant or unimportant? Um, yeah, do you find it hard or hard to find time on your own? Now, when I say this, um. It's not the usual, you know, your kids are following you around and you don't get any time to yourself. But um, it's it's going to be all about their needs and their wants and their desires. It's not going to be about your needs, your needs for time off. Um, you may be followed within your own home. They may have uh, spying equipment, as I said, spyware on your on your phone, on your laptop, um, on your computer. If you do go out to work, they'll want to, you know, you will have to uh, account for your whereabouts. You would have to account for your spending. Uh, you won't be allowed to buy personal items. Um, uh, you know, as I said, it's not just about the physical, guys. It's not. It is, you know, it crosses over to the sexual, uh, the financial and the uh, emotional abuse as well. Um they are going to want to control, as I said, everything, including um, the, not just the finances, but the access to the car. All the assets may be there in their name and the debts may be in yours. Uh, if you think about it, they'll want they'll want the house in their name. So, you know, you don't have control over that over that. Make sure that you know that you're legally entitled to have a house. If you buy a house that you are entitled to have your name on that document, um, the car, even though you may own two cars, they may insist on having both their cars in their name because if you upset them then they can legally take that car away from you it's their car um so if you are buying that car with your own money it should be in your name not in their name there are so many ways uh, in which uh, a perpetrator can abuse you so it, it's a very long and very extensive list and I do go into, I break down the emotional, I break down the financial, I break down the um, physical and the sexual uh, abuse down into a bit more detail on the blog. So if you'd like to read it, it's on www.debraburnecologyservices.com. And I would just like to finish on saying um, that as long as anybody, 
any man or woman in our society, and I'm not just talking about um, Ireland, I'm not just talking about the UK, I'm not just talking about your own country, I'm talking about us as a society worldwide are in a domestic violence situation. If one person is left behind, that's unacceptable. That is completely unacceptable. It is up to us to stop this. It is up to us to educate our children because they need to be aware that domestic violence can occur in dating. Uh, again, that's not covered under the law. It, they they think about it in terms of partnerships and marriage, um, you know, and long term relationships. But the warning signs can be there in a dating relationship. So if you, um, you know, we should, as parents, uh, warn our children about what is acceptable behaviour from somebody and what isn't. So in in we can do that by building their self-esteem and their self-confidence um, and looking at our own behaviour. So I will finish on that. And I know it's a difficult topic this week. Um, I know some people won't want to watch this and I know some people will find it difficult for their own reasons why they can't. But please, um, if you can, spread the word, get educated, get empowered. That's very important. That's why I do the blogs. That's why, I, you know, I write. It's about empowering you. It's giving you information so that you feel empowered to help yourself or maybe help somebody else um, to educate your children, whatever you need to do and to move on and to move on and have a good and happy life. And that's what we're that's all we ever want. That's all anybody really at the heart of it ever wants is to have a happy, healthy and uh, loving life. So I will leave it at that. And thank you very much for listening. And next week I will be talking about uh, how you can help yourself if you're in this sort of situation or how you can help a friend. But as I said, safety first. Always remember that. Thank you.